Uh, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about the Dell PowerEdge R230 server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on solid state drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. It's a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R230 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps you in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. We'll top in. Uh, this video will be specifically focused on solid state drives for your R230 server. So here's what we're going to do in this video as a whole is we're going to go over the different types of compatible solid state drives for your R230 server. We're going to go over the max speeds, the max sizes. We're going to physically install one, which is incredibly easy because it's hot swap, but we're going to show you nonetheless. Then we're going to show you a cool tool that we like called uh, HD Sentinel, which is a nice secondary tool. And then we're going to show you how to use Dell Diagnostics as well. And Dell Diagnostics is great. I'm I'm a huge fan of Dell Diagnostics. It's very simple to use. It'll test more than just your drives. It'll test your entire system. Uh, if you want it to, you can choose what to test on it, but I'm a, a big, big fan of it. And then the reason I like HD Sentinel is it's a nice secondary tool outside of Dell Diagnostics. And we, what we do is we hook up a storage array to our server, and then we'll test our drive standalone, and we can do it in bulk, which is nice for what we do. But it'll tell you the power on hours and the health score. And it's really nice before you ever throw a drive into a live production environment, just to make sure that you have a good health drive and it is in fact new right so these are all uh, just good tools that we hope that you find helpful at home so all right we'll top in uh what are the compatible types well you have sas and you have sata with sas there's some uh, distinct advantages and most specifically the speed and with sata there's some distinct advantages and most specifically the cost so with sas you can get 12 gigabit per second whereas with sata you can only get six gigabit per second so it's really important to note uh, so that if that is of uh, importance to you speed is the most important thing and uh, you're willing to pay for it, SAS is the way to go, but again, it will cost more than SATA, which again is the big advantage for SATA. Now, on the max sizes, it's the same each, uh, either way you go. You can get 7.68 terabytes per drive slot, which when you really think about, it's actually pretty good storage overall. And uh, so yeah, so that's what you're gonna get as far as the max speeds, the max sizes, and the compatibilities. So now what we'll do is we'll show you how to actually physically install one, and then we'll show you Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel. All right, have our ESD gear on. We are safe to work on our R230. I want to note a couple things. This is the hot swap version, which means we're going to use a tray, but there are some cabled inversions for the R230. And do note that if you are using the cabled inversion uh, on our website, you can buy just the SSD. And yes, you can screw it down and you don't need any kind of converter to do that. Uh, but if you're using the hot swap, we will send a tray with the adapter slash converter to install a 2.5 inch drive because realistically your SSDs will be 2.5 inch. So now we're going to remove this old hard drive we have in here. We're going to push the red circle and just pull the tray out. It's a very simple installation overall. And now we're going to slide our SSD in. So just push it all the way in. Close it. Uh, again, it's a very simple installation as a whole. It'll be one of the best boosts in performance that you can do for your R230. If you want to in increase the overall performance, you want to extend the life. Uh, the two things we always recommend, upgrade your SSD, upgrade your RAM. Generally speaking, your CPU is uh, performing ahead of all those and everything is catching up to the CPU. So update, uh, upgrade your SSD, upgrade your RAM, you're going to have way better performance out of your server as a whole. So now what we're going to show you how to do is to test your machine as a whole and test the SSDs with Dell Diagnostics. Let's get going. Hey guys, it's Ben with Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you how to test your hard drives with Dell Diagnostics. And technically, it's going to cover more than just hard drives. It'll test your whole system and other components such as your CPUs, your memory, your NIC, the fans, video cards, and much, much more. But like I said, you can also test your hard drives with this, and it's actually a pretty good way to test them, um, and it's a great way to see if there's issues with those drives. So let's go ahead and get started. So what you want to go ahead and do is boot up your server and during post you want to go ahead and press F10 so you can enter the lifecycle controller. Once you're in the lifecycle controller you want to navigate to the hardware diagnostics tab on the left side and then you want to press run hardware diagnostics. And you may get a little warning screen but you just want to go ahead and press yes and it'll take a little bit of a second to load but this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So immediately, whenever we load into Dell Diagnostics, there's a lot of information that pops up. As you can see on the left-hand side of the screen, it shows everything that's gonna be tested. On the right-hand side of the screen, there's lots of information about the test itself. Um, you can also navigate to the results and different configurations and also the event log. 
One thing I do want to mention about Dell Diagnostics is that some of you out there, when trying to run the hardware diagnostics, you may get an issue or you may get a warning about the firmware not being supported or the onboard diagnostics not being supported. And in that case, you want to go ahead and you can either do this in Lifecycle Controller itself or you can do it in iDRAC, but you just want to go ahead and update that firmware. And we actually have a video later on in the series that covers mass updates. And one of the things that's in those updates is the onboard diagnostics firmware. So stay tuned for that, and that'll give you all that information you need. And like I said, you can also do this through iDRAC as well. So other than that, there's not really much to say about these tests. You just kind of let it run, and this can this can take a while. It can take, you know, maybe a low end of 20 minutes up to maybe even an hour, especially if you have more memory in your system. Um, it's going to take a while to test all of that. Um, the more drives you have, that might add some time to it. So it really just depends on your system's configuration. But we're going to go ahead and fast forward through this. Like I said, pretty straightforward. Um, if it has any issues, it'll show you that that test failed. Uh, but if it has a check next to the test, like it does on the left-hand side for all of our items here, then that means the test was successful and there's no need to worry about it. So like I said, we're just going to go ahead and fast forward. All right, so we have finally reached the end of our test. And at the end of the test, we can go to the results tab that's in the middle of the screen, and we can go ahead and scroll through all the different messages. You can also view the event log, so that's pretty helpful. But if you go to the results, you can see a more in-depth information about the test that you just ran. So there's something very specific. It's a great place to look. But overall, that's Dell Diagnostics. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Uh, it's easy to access. Like I said, you may have that one issue where you may have to update the onboard diagnostics firmware. Uh, but other than that, once you do that, you shouldn't have any issues. All you got to do is navigate to the hardware diagnostics and just let the test run. You can let these run and then just go off, do something else, and come back 10, 20 minutes later. Um, and it's a pretty easy way to, one, test all of the drives in your system and make sure they're properly functioning but it's also a great way to test all of the other components in your system. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now and as you can see, we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically populate within the software. And like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have a 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%. So all pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom built server or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock. So you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com. Sales at cloudninjas.com. Anyways, guys, thank you for stopping by.